dealt with other people in war zones that have dealt with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder? It's funny, I hear Mr. Farr, and I feel like I should call my dad and put you on the phone to him. <laughs> it was my initial, I was like, Mr. Farr, I wonder what he does. Um, uh, I, um, I met Dennis, I didn't ask this, but I met Dennis, and we spoke for two hours the first time we met in Los Angeles, and um, he talked a little bit about the script and about how it had come to him uh, through Scott's book, and how he had done an adaptation, and he sent me the script in a week. I had seen No Man's Land and loved it, and... Um, I really wanted to do the script and then as we said it was a matter of these boys between them being able to get the funding because it wasn't an easy sell, it's a slow burn, um, it's quite a, a contained piece um, and thereby started, the, when I got the money together I started the process of just thinking about it and I, I had Scott's book as a reference point which I underlined some of the more um, internal commentaries, uh, Scott is the writer speaking of the emotional um, battle that was going on within the character that wasn't necessarily in the script so I had they were kind of like benchmarks for me just personally to go back to um, and it just became kind of a, a ritual that gave me comfort like a baby's blankie literally and, um, and and then I was just talking to the beautiful Damir I can never say his surname Damir Shagwa who's a Bosnian war photographer uh, who works for Reuters and Danis met Damir during the war in Sarajevo, and they became uh, friends, and they've been friends ever since. And Damir, for me, was one-stop shopping. He was, he had every bit of experiential information and experiential thought and feeling about what it was to witness people do the most atrocious of things that a human nature can allow a person to do. Um, and we, I went to Sarajevo and spent some time with him, and it was just that, you know, and, and reading some books about the earlier boys and the forming of the Magnum Agency, looking at photographs from today's world and reading the newspaper and that kind of, you know, so... And then I had tuna. <laughs> that was the other part of it, so, um, you know, but it was all there from Dallas's script, which was withdrawn from Scott's book, and, and then you just use your imagination and any other experience that somebody else is generous enough to share with you that they've had, you, you, try, and, you try and own them in whatever way you do, you know. Cheers. Character, and I'm wondering if you have any comment on that in, in terms of uh, what allowed you to connect, your character to connect with that psychiatrist as opposed to, say, the first one that you saw. It, it can. There's very few things that are definitive in life, in my humble opinion. There's, there are some things, I'm sure, we'll not connect to them, but very few. And <laughs> the idea that somebody has to experience it some something directly to help somebody else get through the same experience. I don't necessarily believe that that is a, that is a, a definitive. I don't believe that that's necessarily the case. I know personally when I went to, it's not, I'm not going to get into this stuff, but it's no secret. When I went off to rehab, I had two doctors that helped me out. The first one was incredibly well educated and it had a good record of helping people out, which it wasn't for me. Because I wanted to talk to somebody that had been to places that I'd been to. And so it was just preference. And with that in mind, I think that was very much the same thing with Mark as a character. He wouldn't allow himself to... Maybe it's ego-driven. Maybe it's that simple. But if, if it is, then that's the healthy aspect of the ego. And the ego forcing you to maybe choose wisely, personally, for yourself. I don't know. But that was it. It was because of Joaquin's experience, because he had seen the things, and he had smelled the smells, and he had looked into the eyes of some of the people that Mark had looked into the eyes of also. Luck be a lady to <laughs> Why would you? Um, I suppose it, uh, for me personally, it was a bit depressing, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't in the most jovial headspace for three or four months. The diet, uh, while having a very specific objective and understanding that there would come a time where I would come off the diet and put my weight back on, um, the diet was uh, mentally and, and, and certainly physically, of course, but very mentally taxing as well. Um, and I mean, the subject matter is again, it's a lot of guilt and a lot of pain that this man is uh, engulfed by, you know, the whole way through the story, pretty much, except for the moments of uh, levity between myself and Jamie Sivers, who played David. 
uh, there was room to play in there, but at sight of that he is always suppressing, suppressing, suppressing the, the manifestations of, of what he has seen throughout the ten years. Um, were taking the toll in every aspect of his life. So, you know, I very much go, it's only acting, and I, I understand that, and, but if you're even acting and somebody screams at you from the pit of their gut and they tell you before they do it and they say, I'm just going to scream at you now, but I love you and you know I'm not angry at you, but let's just try this, it's not fucking nice. <laughs> it's not nice if somebody that really gives you the heads up and they love you and you're after having a great night and you're all cool, it's not nice. So. You take it with you a little bit. It's it's incomparable what I went through to what the guys who really do it through. It's incomparable. But personally, maybe I'm oversensitive, it stays with you for a while. some uh, common ground with the character between uh, me and character I played uh, but this time I, I didn't find any single point uh, uh, I, so, so, except of the gun <laughs> so, so I decided to, uh, I said to myself okay I have to play to act a little bit more than usually <laughs> I, I saw a movie now and uh, I'm so touched with, with, with Colin, uh, Colin's acting and uh, is, if, it is, if there is any justice in the world it, it, it will be Oscar for Mendo.